So based on the described as mapping exercises, even though we're having episodic connectivity to the web services, this is 504 different records that are being georeferenced in this much time. So it gives you an idea of the scale of time savings. Now when the answers come back, that doesn't mean you're done. That means you have an opinion and that should be checked. But at least this opinion is something that you can put on the map and check. Whereas with this only the textual locality, you can't. If you do this by hand and geolocate, how long does it take? About as long as it takes to use the georeferencing calculator. So a minute or two per locality? Probably. So you just did yeah. something there are ways to optimize it. You organize them so that they're similar in the same general area, so you can check them on the map and so on. But yeah. Than what just yeah. Yeah. So now, where are my georeferences? My GL column is empty here. That's sad. Are there actually any georeferences that came back? Let's find out by using a facet. I'll use a customized facet again because I really like that one. Facet by blank. And says they're all true. So in this case, we didn't actually get any answers from geolocate. And that's sad and I don't know why that is because they did yesterday. Let me see if I still have those answers in the geolocate field. Edit column, and no. facet, customize facet, facet by blank. So this is what happened when I did it yesterday. Is it blank is false for 245 of 259. So geolocate was in fact able to answer about half of them. Let's look at the ones that it was able to answer. So here's what we got. That's what geolocate told me. And you say, wow, John, that's helpful. <laughs> How do I get the latitude and longitude out of that? And the answer is more queries, more fil um, filters. So here, there are more tricks that I'll be giving you. So to get the latitude out of that huge response, we can do a quick filter. We'll do it by adding a column in the geolocates menu, and we'll add a column based on the values in the geolocate column. So add column based on this column. And this formula is the one that we'll enter. To interpret this formula in English, what we want to do is we want to take the value that's there and parse it as if it was JSON. JSON is a format for data. Let me go back here real quick. All of this format, you see the brackets and then a value and a colon and a number and a comma and value, colon, number. That's a JSON format. It's a way to pass structured data back and forth. If you turned all of this into a database, you could put it all together and make a database with structure. So that's a nice thing. Simplified string for information that has structure. So what the formula does is it looks in there and it says, okay, I'm looking at JSON. In that JSON, I want to find the thing called A which probably means answer. And I want to find the first one. For that answer, I want to look at the part that's called result set. It's inside of that structure. Inside of there, I want to look at all the features that are there. There may be more than one. I want to get the very first one on the list. I'm getting the first result set out of the answer. Then I want to look at its geometry. 
And its geometry consists of many different parts, one of which is a coordinate or a set of coordinates. The very first coordinate in that list is the decimal latitude. So the formula says this is how we go down into JSON and find the exact part of it that is the decimal latitude. Let's do it. So I select the column, and then I wanted to add a column based on this column. And I'll give it a new name, and I'll call it lat, or deck lat for short. I'll paste in my formula. There's no syntax error. That's all of the mess that we're going to look in, and that's what we find from it. So if you were to look down in through here, you would find an, the geometry, and you'd find the coordinates, and the first value inside of coordinates is 11.116667. That's how you get the latitude out of there. So we want that to go into a new field called decklat, so I click on OK. And now I have a deck lat field populated with latitudes. Right here. They're not all the same. It might look like that from what we're seeing here. But they're not all the same. There's a different one, for example. It's a different place. Okay. We want to do the same thing to get the longitude out of there. So we'll edit a column and add a column based on that one and this one we'll call deck long or longitude and I need to go get the formula for that one it's very similar to the previous one the only difference is right here this one because it's the next value inside of the coordinates part of the answer so Go back here, paste that, wait to tell if it gives me any syntax errors. It doesn't, and it gives me an answer that looks like the value. I check it out here, coordinates. The second part is a 9.166667, and I'm happy. I add that field, and now I have my deck, lat, deck long deck lat. Geolocate gives you an uncertainty as well. We should not ignore that going to do all that work for us. Let's make, take advantage of it. Do similar. Edit column. Add column based on this column. Call it un for uncertainty. I'll go get the formula from here. And I'm able to do that because somewhere in the JSON response, inside of the features are, is a property called uncertainty radius in meters. That's convenient. The software was built based on standards. That's something everybody can use. Paste the formula in here. Indeed, we get a number. 1807, 1.8 kilometers for that one. Say OK. And now I've finished georeferencing the northern province of Sierra Leone for that data set. So over here are the fields that I did last night just to make sure it all worked and I gave them the Darwin Core field names. Here are the same fields that we just did now. Uncertainty, longitude, and latitude. I hope that convinces you that fetching by URLs using web services is a useful thing. If there was a web service for taxonomy, you could use that also. You have a question? Yes?
そうアマスユミングダッドディスアフターアフターアフターディスカキュレーションアフターゲッティングダッドモラルアティチュードアマスユミングイフアイゴトゥアナダフィールドメイクモーサマダコレクションズウィッドディフレントロカリティス I don't need to get back to the to the formula. Maybe if I keep it in the in the in the spreadsheet, I just key in the new coordinates. It will turn. It will it will it will calculate itself automatically. I think I understand the nature of your question. So let me explain what happens in what order. I think that will answer your question. I think the question is how persistent are the results or how are they related to other edits in the data? So the answer is if I change the locality and it becomes a different locality, the latitude and longitude will remain the same as when I called the web service. They will not adjust based on the change in locality. I would have to call the web service again to update it. No? For that case, I need to copy the formula once more. You would have to use the formula again, yes, and do it the whole process again. What that suggests is that there is a well, a sensible process for doing the georeferencing, and that is do all of your clustering and clean up all of the geography first. The localities, I wouldn't bother editing the localities. I wouldn't try to clean them or make them standard. Leave them as they are. They can be interpreted as they are, usually. I meant if you go to a different locality. Right. And make new collections, specific but collections. If you go to a new locality. So this is a locality that was not georeferenced at all so far? No. Yes. This web service was called only on that 504 records out of the 65,000. All others are still blank with respect to georeferences because I only chose a subset. So if you want to work country by country in a data set like this one, then you'll make a facet for one country, do the georeferencing. Make a new facet for another country, do the georeferencing. But it, you'll have to do this process each time. There's no reason that you have to do it country by country. You can send all of it to geolocate and wait for the answers to come back and do it all in one pass. The only reason I did not is because there were 42,000 of them. And you saw how long we had to wait just now for 504. So. It's good to think about what process should I go through, what will create the least amount of work for me when I do this. And the answer is, if you're able to do it, clean up your geography first, then do your georeferencing. And don't change any of that afterwards, because it might change the results. If you have to change it afterwards for some reason, you should georeference it again, because the answer could be different. Kim had a comment. It's more a question. So if you do break your data set into smaller chunks and you make new columns for latitude, longitude, and uncertainty for that small chunk, and you move to the next chunk, you wouldn't make new columns for latitude, longitude, and uncertainty, would you? How would you? You combine? wouldn't want to, but the way that you do the process of fetching from URLs, you would have to. Okay. So every, that's actually a good point. Another reason not to do it that okay. way is you'd end up, as I have, three columns for the first set of georeferences I did, another three columns for the second set, okay. and you would have to merge those columns. Okay. You can. Refine allows you to merge columns, but it's, an, yeah. it's extra work. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about georeferencing with Refine? Thanks, John. Sure. This is very useful. 
So my question is, um, so there are many ways to uh, do reference from what you taught us from like uh, the morning example where you have uh, a heading and a distance, for example. So is it possible for geolocate working in refine to be able to give you, um, you know, to be able to georeference for you based on any of these categories? I don't know which one this one's based, whether it was just calculating from locality names, for example. Mm -hmm. But if it's not locality names and you have just a heading, for instance, is it possible to still get data? In case not everyone heard the question is, the question is, is geolocate capable of doing georeferences for all of the different locality types that we see in our georeferencing quick reference guide? Distances at a heading, distance only, distance in orthogonal directions, distance along a path? 